I was just driving this morning, my emission light came on. So normally when my emission light comes on, which is the mail light or the solid check engine light comes on, it usually wants me to do a park region, to pull over and do a park region. But this time it was something else. So that happened when I was in Oklahoma on I-40. I'm headed to Plainview, Texas for a delivery at the Walmart distribution center. And right about outside of Oklahoma City, the light came on. And I stopped here. When the light came on, you know, nothing changed. It still let me run. You know, I didn't have no power loss or anything like that. So I just kept running it like that until I got here in, in Plainview, Texas. Right outside, there's a pilot. So I stopped here right outside and I hooked up the OTR diagnostic tool. I was just gonna do a regen and go on about my business. And I usually hook up the OTR diagnostic tool and just keep going. But this time it gave me different codes. So we're about to check them out and see what see what the codes say. So one thing I don't like about the truck that I have, which is the Freightliner Cascadia 2016, is that every time I get an active code, it doesn't give me what the code is. It just tells me to service the engine, you know, basically take it to a dealership. So this is what I have issued. See, this is the emissions light. And this is the check engine light and the, the stop engine light. You can kind of tell from the glare. But this is the emission light. So it got one active fault code. So if I hold on to right here, let's see what it says. Emission system problem detected service engine. That's all it tells me. So any anytime I want to look what the code is, I have to go into the OTR diagnostic tool. So here I am, I'm loading up the OTR diagnostic app on my phone. I'm not sure what happened with the audio from the video that I did, but I'm doing a voiceover. So I'm gonna try to try to do everything I can to match what I had said before. But here we sh we showing that we have one active code. Um, let's see, one active code. So if we cl click on that, it just goes to bottom. We look at view fault code. We click on that, and that's what it gives us: SPN three two two three FMI seven. So I'm gonna end up clicking it right here. Then it just gives you an overview of what the fault code is. After treatment intake gas sensor one heater control. Overview NOx raw sensor not ready after dew point enable check. Troubleshooting module has detected and correct response from mechanical system. Uh, description NOx inlet sensor failure to activate fault system no reaction. So I had something I had to say something like fault reaction. Uh, fault system is the engine will slow down or it'll derate the truck. I had said something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying my best to do a voiceover. I'm trying to remember what I had said in the video. But repair procedure, damage SCR inlet, knock sensor, connector and or harness, faulty SCR inlet sensor, faulty ACM. Additional information. Uh, just pause to read it because I'm all jacked up. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what the code is. That's what it's giving me. Check replace the inlet knock sensor, which I actually I actually have one. I bought this one off Amazon. It was for about a hundred bucks. And I bought it on accident, the inlet knock sensor. I bought it on accident. I was trying to buy the outlet knock sensor and then I ended up buying this one. And by the time I wanted to return it, uh, I think you only have like 30 days uh, to return items or like 60 days or something like that. But by the time I wanted to return it, I couldn't return no more. So now I have it. The issue with this, with the Amazon knock sensors, is that a lot of times they're they're faulty, you know, they don't work, you know, whatever, etc. Because they're cheap. 
Now this one cost me about a hundred bucks on Amazon. And I just called the dealership in Lubbock, Texas. That's where I live. I just called them and the price for an inlet knock sensor is 480 bucks plus $180 for core charge. So if, if you don't take them, the, the old part, they're gonna charge you 180 bucks, which to me, you know, the whole core charge to me is a scam because you can buy these parts online and they, they don't charge you a, a core charge and they're much cheaper online. And, and they also, online you can get them, you can get the original manufacturer parts, not the aftermarket parts, which this one that I have, it is aftermarket. So what I'm gonna do is if the code pops up, you know, when I, when I get home, hopefully I don't have any issues, you know, I don't get the stop engine uh, light or anything like that. I don't think I will. So when I get home, I'm gonna replace it with this Amazon inlet knock sensor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a regen and I'm gonna see how it performs. If it doesn't perform right or give me, the, the light doesn't go away, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go to the dealership to buy the $480 part. Which if it, if it doesn't give me no codes or anything like that, I'm gonna keep running it. And for whatever reason, a week or two later, it, it gives me issues again. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the, the old part, which the part that has right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it out again. And the old part, it should uh, last me till I can manage to come back home. Like I said, I have no power loss or anything like that as of right now. So hopefully it'll last me. We'll see, I'll let y'all know what happens. So here I am at home. I had my local mechanic change out the, uh, the inlet knock sensor. Uh, I did a regen on my truck and I didn't get no codes pop up. So like I said, the, the knock sensor it is aftermarket. So I'm gonna see how it holds up over the road. But right now, I'm not getting no codes or anything like that. You know, it's, it's pretty risky uh, putting a knock sensor from, from Amazon or an aftermarket knock sensor at that. You never know with these aftermarket ones. But um, I'm fixing to start driving. I'm headed back on the road. So I'll see how it goes. Hopefully, get no issues. If I do happen to get run into issues with the sensor not working, uh, I do have the old one. I'll probably just end up swapping it out and try to make it back home and put a, a original part. But as of right now, everything's good. My mechanic charged me $150 to swap out that sensor. I'm sure we'd have paid probably double that amount at a dealership or at a shop. And I got very lucky when when the the sensor started failing because I was on the way home. So I got pretty lucky on that. I did run the truck for about 300 miles from the time that the light light came on to the time I got home was about 300 miles. And other than the light being on, I didn't really have any issues with the engine or you know power or anything like that. I'm about to get on the road, so I'll probably probably do another update tomorrow. See if there's any issues going on. So I just got to, to Foster Falls, Virginia. So far I have driven around 1500 miles since I replaced the knock sensor. And I haven't gotten no code, so that's a good sign so far. Hopefully it'll last me for a very long time. I'm gonna put the link uh, in the description to where I got it from. I got it from Amazon. I mean, if, if you just look up DD15 inlet knock sensor, I mean, you're just gonna get a whole bunch of results from Amazon and on eBay, which on, on both of them, you can get like a deal for the outlet and the inlet knock sensor for less than 300 bucks, something like that. For total, I spent under 300 bucks getting it replaced. You know, who knows how much I would have paid at a shop, probably two times, maybe even three times more. So thankfully I had my little OTR diagnostic tool and it was able to tell me what was wrong with it. And I was able to, to make it home and get my local mechanic to change it out at a way cheaper price than basically anywhere. So another thing about this, about these sensors, so like all the sensors, even at the dealership sensors, 
they all come from overseas so all they do is they slap their brand on them and they overpriced them over here in the states so that's what I got to say about some of these parts you know are they all the same no but a lot of a lot of these dealerships they come from the same manufacturer over there overseas but hopefully that helps somebody out so I'll see you on the next one